Hello! The Euros are officially over. Time has flown by so fast throughout this entire tournament. I can't believe it. Congratulations to Italy for winning the entire thing. Unfortunately, I just missed all the celebrations in Rome, but fully deserved from this nation. But today I figured, why don't I go over my team of the tournament? I've seen that UEFA released their own official team of the tournament. I got some disagreements. I know you all do as well. So if you have any with mine, let me know in the comments below. But before we get into the team, let's take a look at our sponsor, OneFootball. OneFootball is one of the best apps which keeps you up to date with nearly every single competition in football but it's gonna serve you very well for Euro 2020. Instead of having to Google search everything over and over again, everything's right there on the app, easy to access and view. The app's got you covered on the schedules, the tables, the latest news, and you can even select your favorite teams you wish to receive extra notifications for. You also can look at the stats for each player that's playing in Euro 2020, so you can stay up to date with who's best for your fantasy team and all that. Guys, I highly recommend you download this app. It's very convenient, easy to use, completely free, so go check it out, might as well. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, so we're just going with the basic 4-3-3 formation. It's nothing deep here, but obviously, let's start out with the goalkeeper first. This guy won the player of the tournament, and I think it's fully deserved. Donnarumma gets that goalkeeper position for the best team of the tournament. Pickford arguably also had a great tournament as well, only conceding two goals throughout the entire tournament, had way more clean sheets. But in my opinion, Donnarumma had a lot of more impressive moments, and obviously, he proved to be the better keeper in the shootout in the final for England versus Italy. So yeah, Pickford's the only person I could see maybe being in that goalkeeper spot other than Donnarumma, but I think Donnarumma just edges it and fully deserved. So yeah, bravo to both these keepers for having insane tournaments. Moving on to our first center back, I gotta go with another Italian here, Bonucci. And while we're at it, I'll go for the other center back role as well, Giorgio Chiellini. Both of these guys have had an insane partnership throughout the tournament. Both just being solid rocks, haven't been dribbled past against once throughout the tournament. Obviously, they conceded some goals, but they've been way too impressive to not include on this team. Obviously, some of the English center backs, such as Harry Maguire, have had an incredible summer, but Harry Maguire didn't play for the whole tournament, and I saw that Maguire made the official UEFA team of the tournament, but I think the Italians deserve the spot for that center back role. Left back though, I am going with an English player. We're going with Luke Shaw. I genuinely think he deserves a bunch of the credit for this amazing English run. Obviously a lot of the players pulled through, but he was one of the more standout defenders, contributing to assists and goals as well. I think this guy fully deserves the team of the tournament spot. Surprised he didn't make it in UEFA, but I think out of all the English defenders, he definitely deserves a spot in there. Now for the right back position, this one is honestly the hardest one to decide. There's a lot of good options we could choose from. UEFA considered Kyle Walker to be the best. I gotta go with the Danish player. I know he was playing left midfielder or right midfielder for most of the tournament, but he's had such a great tournament. I had to just include him in this role. Uh, we're going with Milet from Denmark. This guy was all over the pitch, getting assists, getting goals, also contributing in the defense, just like Luke Shaw. I mean, both of them were very versatile throughout the whole tournament, being all over the pitch. I think these guys both deserve the fullback spot. And Denmark obviously had an incredible tournament, so it would be pretty criminal to not include some Danish players in this squad. Now moving on to the midfielders, staying on topic with the Danish players, we're going with Hoiberg. This guy actually made it onto the UEFA team of the tournament, and rightfully so. The Danish midfield deserves a lot of credit, and this guy was a huge part to their success. Unfortunately getting knocked down in the semi-finals, and they still played very well throughout the whole tournament. So bravo to this guy, bravo to the rest of the Danish squad. I hope no one disagrees with me on this decision. Now going with the other center mid option, I'm going with Pedri. This guy won young player of the tournament and fully deserved. I think he was one of the hardest working Spanish players throughout the tournament. Obviously there were some other sick players in the squad. Other Spanish players, honorable mentions, I guess Almo played pretty well. Obviously he missed the penalty against Italy, but he was still very noticeable throughout the entire tournament. Not converting a lot of chances, but still providing a decent amount of assists and still giving it his all on the pitch. I was impressed with him as well, but I think Pedri just tops him in terms of performance. Now for the foul midfielder, this one's tough. I'm gonna have to agree with UEFA's decision though for their midfielder options. I've gone with Jorginho. Verratti was also a solid option. I think we definitely got to include an Italian player in there. Sort of similar to why Pedri deserved the spot. Very hard working, played in every single match. I don't know, it's a tough call and it's honestly hard to debate with between him or Verratti, but I've had to go with Jorginho. But let's move on to the attack. Here is where I had some changes compared to UEFA's team. UEFA put in Sterling, Lukaku, and Chiesa. The only similarity I have with that list is Chiesa. This guy didn't necessarily score a lot of goals, but he was very, 
very noticeable throughout the pitch and his goals he scored were very crucial scoring the goal to put them in the lead against Austria after Italy were having a tough time against them and scoring against Spain and even in the final he was all over the pitch making so many dribbles this guy is just brilliant I knew he was Italy's most underrated player and he proved it in this tournament I'm glad I made that call he obviously did very well in Serie A this season as well so Hopefully, he continues his run on form with performances, but in my opinion, he was one of the best attackers in the tournament. But let's move on to my disagreements. I was banking that Lukaku would make the team of the tournament. Um, I thought he would do a lot better than he actually did. He still had a decent tournament, don't get me wrong. Scoring four goals is solid. But obviously, Belgium did not get as far as planned, and he wasn't as crucial and clinical when it mattered. So I got to give it to some other players, and these guys topped him in the top scoring charts. I've gone with Schick for striker, obviously. He only lost the golden boot by one assist to Ronaldo, and he was the biggest surprise throughout the tournament. I don't think anyone expected him to score so many goals. Only one of his goals was a penalty as well. He also scored potentially the goal of the tournament. This guy defied all odds. I think a lot of people started to doubt Czech Republic and their performances, and they actually did very well, beating Netherlands, obviously. You gotta include a Czech player there, and I think he was one of Czech Republic's best players, so... I think it's weird that UEFA didn't include him to be honest, but it is what it is. And then the final player I'm choosing is Cristiano Ronaldo. Yep, Portugal got knocked out in the round of 16s, but this guy still won the golden boot for Euro 2020. Not to mention he was in the group of death where all of his goals came from. I definitely think it's between either him or Raheem Sterling. Like they, Raheem Sterling obviously scored a lot more crucial goals for England. But if we're basing on individual performances, I think Ronaldo just tops him. It's really neck and neck though. I think that spot definitely is either Cristiano Ronaldo or Raheem Sterling. I'm going to give it to Cristiano Ronaldo though. Yeah, he played less games. There's obviously so many honorable mentions. So many players have had insane tournaments. I feel bad leaving Raheem Sterling out, honestly. But I guess UEFA did, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just that one guy on YouTube giving you my thoughts. But yeah, if you have any disagreements with me, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for making it to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. I'm thinking to maybe do a potential worst 11 of Euro 2020. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comments below. Take care. Lock and